It's Monday, the 5th of February. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And today we're going to answer some questions on a couple of recent general aviation crashes, starting with the RV6 crash here in Concord, California, and then the Bonanza crash near Clearwater, Florida. Tomorrow we'll get into the Grumman Cougar crash from the Rebuild Rescue YouTube channel. Starting off with the Aviation Safety Network, Tuesday, 30 January, Vans RV6, November 30, Alpha Kilo. The RV6 is an experimental series of aircraft, a very popular, the most popular kit-built series of aircraft are Vans series of aircraft. The RV6 is the two-seat side-by-side version, uh, normally powered by either a 150 or 180 horse Lycoming engine. Uh, I built a, I began to build one of these aircraft years ago uh, before they had quick build kits and it took me uh, two years and a thousand hours just to build all the flying surfaces to one of these aircraft but they're an excellent design for an experimental aircraft and very popular this one was built in 1996 one fatality near buchanan field concord eyewitness accounts state that a vans rv6 november 30 alpha kilo began to experience engine failure on takeoff runway 19 right the pilot began to pitch the nose down, began regaining engine power, and made an attempt to turn back to the runway. At this point, the pilot experienced a stall into a spin, where it was destroyed, impacting nose first into an intersection south of Buchanan Field. Concord's Buchanan Field is located just north of the San Francisco Bay Area, just outside of the Class Bravo airspace, and is a tower-controlled airport with multiple runways. As we zoom into the airport here, from uh, Google Maps. Here's your runway 19 left and 19 right. This aircraft was doing numerous touch and go patterns off of 19 left. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But the impact happened right here at Concord and Diamond, yeah, Diamond Way. So the impact was right here, just off the end of the runway 19 left. we look down here at the intersection that's where you can look back and see the airport right there and here's the picture of the crash after impact it does look like a nearly straight in impact on the RV6 here's a picture of 30 Alpha Kilo before the accident two place side by side low wing very high performance airplane these RV6s but easy to fly and easy to handle. This, the, the neat thing about the RV6s is, is that they've got um, flush riveting throughout the entire design, a Hershey bar constant cord wing, which has a very high G onset. You can really pull Gs pretty quickly with this aircraft. They turn fantastic, but at the same time, they've got a great airfoil shape that allows them a good, safe, wide envelope. They also have a very low landing speed thus a relatively low stall speed compared to the high performance of the aircraft. And you can get these things up over 180 to 200 miles per hour in cruise with the right engine prop combination. According to local news reports, the pilot was 75-year-old Jacek Romanski from Berkeley, California. Now let's take a look at that FlightAware data. Now here's the FlightAware data. And if you look at Mr. Romanski's history here on FlightAware, it appears that this is all he ever did was this extremely tight series of touch and goes. And according to eyewitness reports, they were used to seeing him out here nearly every day doing exactly the same thing. These left hand patterns off of one nine left, just up and down and up and down as if he never left the pattern. And that's got to be extremely hard on the engine to just do nothing but patterns and not even give the engine a chance to properly warm up in a nice long cruise climb and flight. Just hammering that throttle wide open and off, wide open and off, day after day. Just keeps going like that. Exact same patterns. So each pattern he's flying very consistently uh, local pilots say they've seen him in the pattern many times doing this they don't know <laughs> with the local air traffic 
tower guys is he just up there pumping up the traffic count for the tower or what kind of relationship has he got with the tower guys there they must be very used to him out here doing this but he pops up in the military we would call this a low closed pattern where you're just ripping around the pattern it's a lot of fun to do but i've never seen anybody do this so consistently all the time that's all all this pilot does so he pops it up to about each time he gets it up to about 900 feet briefly just right here in the midfield downwind and then chops the throttle and whips it right in for another landing and then boom full power probably 1500 foot per minute rate of climb pops it right back up to 900 feet and and repeats the same pattern over and over and over again he's not doing your standard long box pattern like uh, traditional touch and go pattern he's just doing these what i call military style low closed patterns if we look at the track log he's popping up 12 1300 feet per minute on his on his uh climb up on his touch and goes and then on his descents he's reaching upwards of 750 to 1200 feet per minute rate of descent on the way back down and then on the very last bit of data he pops it up to 1500 feet per minute about 70 miles per hour ground speed and the weather was beautiful that time of day and the winds were light or virtually non-existent so the weather was not a factor except for perhaps the possibility of carburetor icing again another big zoom climb 1500 feet up to the pattern altitude uh cutting up to just under 100 miles per hour on the downwind and then picking up a rate of descent a high rate of descent 1300 feet per minute at 500 feet and then at 100 feet still coming down at 429 feet per minute at 91 miles per hour ground speed doing a big 90 degree turn and then the very last very last data point 79 mile per hour ground speed so if the accident occurred right down here at this intersection if we take a look at his patterns every time he passes over that point he's somewhere between 200 and 400 feet and about 80 miles per hour so the point being if you have an engine problem as eyewitnesses reported they heard a sputter sputter a drop of the nose and then just a snap stall spin into the ground you just simply don't have any room to maneuver from this point right here with an engine failure on takeoff on that short of a pattern so it sounds like perhaps was he attempted to come back to the airport was he attempting to do the impossible turn back to the airport regardless this is a classic case of a aircraft exceeding the critical angle of attack and most likely what's known as an accelerated stall stalling into the ground why the engine quit who knows uh, investigators may be able to try to determine that but i tell you this sort of flying is extremely hard on the engine did the engine finally just say i give up i can't take it anymore or was there something else going on was there a fuel issue carburetor icing just don't know yet a couple of notes about the fuel system in the rv6 the stock fuel system consists of a left tank and a right tank and the fuel selector consists of left right or off there is no both position in the rv6 on the stock fuel system now it's an experimental aircraft you can set it up however you want but most rvs are pretty standardized in this respect so you do need to manage the fuel between the left and right tanks the fuel is normally then fed into the engine via the engine driven fuel pump and it is backed up with an electric boost pump with a switch operated by the pilot and the bigger question i have is why was this the only flying that mr romansky ever did why did he not ever go anywhere in his rv6 why did he not ever leave the pattern this is very odd uh, flying behavior up next the bonanza crash into the trailer park in florida again on the aviation safety network this crash occurred on thursday the first of february a 1979 beechcraft v35b bonanza 
one fatality, one occupant on board the aircraft, two fatalities apparently from people on the ground as he crashed into the trailer park. He departed Vero Beach Airport, Florida and was heading to uh, Clearwater Air Park. A Beechcraft V-35B Bonanza crashed into a mobile home park near Clearwater, Florida when approaching Clearwater Air Park and a post-impact fire ensued. The pilot and two people on the ground perished and the pilot and the aircraft in the mobile home were destroyed by fire. The ATC recording shows that the pilot was on approach and trying to align with runway 34 at uh, the Clearwater Air Park. And this appears to be another classic case of a private pilot trying to get into a private air park, a dimly lit private air park after dark in an air park that's surrounded by much brighter lights uh, in a relatively congested area. We just went through this here in a crash in Texas recently. The pilot then mentions that he wants to change frequencies to activate the runway lights. These runway lights are normally activated by keying the Unicom frequency five times. And a few seconds later, he cancels the IFR clearance. The pilot returns to the frequency later and reports that he was losing his engine or losing an engine. Aviate, navigate, communicate. There's nothing ATC can do for you if you are losing your engine. On these Beechcraft Bonanzas, I've owned a couple of these before. This is the 1979 version. This too has a left tank, a right tank, pressurized fuel system that recycles fuel in this model of Bonanza it recycles the extra fuel back to the tank that you're using either the left or right main but if we look at the picture of this aircraft here's a picture of November 6659 Lima on flight aware it shows that it also had the tip tanks auxiliary fuel tanks to the Bonanza so that's four different fuel tanks you need to manage in in this model of Bonanza and it's a very common occurrence in these Bonanzas for pilots to mismanage the fuel but it's very quick to recover now this pilot at the time that he reported an engine problem was only at about 1,000 feet above the ground you need to quickly just switch the fuel tanks to the fullest tank and hit the boost pump on and that engine will recover it takes a few seconds and those seconds feel like hours but the engine will quickly recover if you have the fuel in another fuel tank it takes those few seconds because if you allowed the tank to run completely dry you've introduced a little bit of air into the system and so you've got to purge that air out which takes a couple of seconds so that's why it's so important on the before landing checklist fuel to the fullest tank but it's very easy in the heat of battle when you're trying to find an air park at night to forget about the fuel or mismanage the fuel and get yourself into this sort of situation the ensuing fire after the crash seems to indicate to me that there was plenty of fuel somewhere on that airplane if this was even the case fuel mismanagement it could have been a straight a head engine failure we simply just don't know and based on the devastation of the wreckage i don't know if investigators will ever be able to know what caused the engine failure here's the airstrip that the pilot was trying to reach clearwater air park it's open to the public it was open way back in 42 it's uh 4100 feet 4108 feet long by 75 feet wide asphalt fair condition and it does have pilot control lighting available though they don't allow touch and goes they do allow landings and takeoffs from 7 in the morning till 11 o'clock at night just to the southeast of this air park is uh, Clearwater International St. Pete and then further south of that is the Albert Witted airfield which the pilot mentioned he was going to attempt to divert to since he couldn't see the airfield that he was trying to land at so relatively short flight all the way from Vero Beach to Clearwater about looks like about one hour total flying time uh, it looks to me like he was on autopilot on an IFR flight plan at 6,000 feet came on down canceled IFR needed to switch frequencies to get the lights turned on couldn't see the runway so he flew parallel to the runway looking for it turned back around and then began having engine troubles and then crashed into the trailer park right over here by the bay apparently there were witnesses to the crash uh, from aircraft that were flying over the area at the time they were talking to him on ATC you see the link for the uh, ATC audio but looking at the 
track log, the final data points, it was up about 1,000 feet, cruising along about 154 mile an hour ground speed, climbed on back up to 1,500 feet, and then right away that speed drops off. Wow, from 154 right down to 93, and he picks up a 2,600 foot per minute rate of descent. And then the last data point, 4,800 foot per minute rate of descent at 100 miles per hour ground speed, right straight into the trailer park. So it's apparent that the pilot lost control of the aircraft following the engine problems, killing two innocent people on the ground here living in the trailer park. Here's the Clearwater Air Park on uh, Google Maps, a great general aviation air park that's been there for years, but it's now surrounded by very congested um, development which at night makes this a very dark hole to try to find even after you've turned on the rather dim runway lights all the bright lights of this surrounding um, development tends to blind the or make it very difficult to find these runway lights at night and if we come down and take a look from the golf course here here you can get a good idea. There's the, the uh, runway lights that the pilot was trying to find, key up and find the runway with. So two more aircraft accidents which appear to be engine failures during critical phases of flight. And we'll get into this tragic loss of Sam and the uh, Grumman Cougar on Rebuild Rescue here tomorrow, which also appears to be some sort of a mechanical problem on takeoff. Are, are these engine failures pilot-induced? Are the, Is the pilots themselves causing the engine failures by fuel mismanagement? Or are we having, or is it a combination of mechanical problems due to, are we having a problem with a lack of qualified aviation maintenance personnel out there in the field? Is this why we're seeing more and more of these engine problems? Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.